Hi, Hare Krishna everyone, it's Madri Devi's Dasi speaking, or a servant of Krishna. Yes, I have, uh, I'm not living alone, I am with people. They are extremely tolerant of me. So, other chapter, I hope everybody's safe, I hope everybody's healthy, and I hope those that those are still listening find what I'm doing somewhat interesting. I know not many people listen for a long time. I mean, those are like one hour long video of me just reading and shouting my mouth off. Also, um, just for fun. So, in LibreOffice, I have um, more um stories including two new this is a new one um this was inspired by one of my well let's call him an AO3 friend by the name of Kosh of uh Kosi Kosei yeah very nice story so this is a gift for him or her Kos uh, Kosei if you read this hi from Canada uh we have this one also and um yeah so <laughs> okay that was just me showing you how just how much I can write uh, by the Lord's mercy of course okay so you may think it's religious drivel but hey Krishna did tell us that he would do everything to give us all salvation the Lord asks I deliver also, from now on, Nanashi will be called Krishna Kripa, and it's true. So Krishna is, um, you know, Krishna is Krishna. Krishna is. Oh, I forgot the word, but basically, he's omnipotent, omnipresent, and okay. If there's an image of Krishna, the name of Krishna, anything related to Krishna is no different from Krishna. So the Krishna in Shin Megami Tensei Apocalypse, as much as they miss the mark on many places, is still Krishna. How do I know? Because his last line with the game, if you don't go all the way back to the Yashiro well, uh, inside the Ark, well he says, he promised that he will give us all salvation no matter what. Now, you may think, oh no, you know, he's planning to come back and to give us his so-called salvation. Thing is, no, that was not what Krishna was talking about. Krishna was talking about me, guys. <laughs> and he's not just talking about me, he's talking about all the Hare Krishna devotees around the world. Because yes, Krishna's promise that he will give us all salvation is true. And this is a promise Krishna will keep. When Krishna gives a promise, he will keep it. And Krishna's salvation? Well, how do you think about eternal life in an eternal identity with having pastime with him, which is our filled with eternity, knowledge, and bliss, and love? An incredible amount of love. And it's eternal. And God doesn't have to be God. God can be your best buddy. That you wrestle with sometime. Who carries you on his back because you won a wrestling match and who you steal his lunch pail and you know you're just friend with him. He's your buddy, he's your bro. <laughs> he's your bro. <laughs> God can be your bro. God can be your son and daughter. God can be your husband. And I'm not talking okay, we're not this body, so the soul we have our own identities separated from the body, so yes, whomever's out there. Krishna can be your husband or he can be your lover. And you know what? It's accessible when you chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Yeah, that's simple, isn't it? Okay, so let's read more about the adventure and misadventure of Krishna Kripa. And I believe... Yeah, okay, so this one, I did read it. Um, no, wait... No, yeah, okay, it was an interesting family. I'm. Um. Uh, I've had so much trouble with the recording. Wait, oh god, oh boy.
Okay, so that's in pieces. I'm sorry, you guys. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Um. Oh, yeah, that's another project I wanted to give you all. It's, um. Uh, okay, so this one. No, that one was the latest. No, okay, so that's. Okay, so this is where I am. Sorry about that, you guys. Let's just say recording's a bit hard sometimes. Okay, anywho, let's start. The place they were in was filthy. It was a small room with a bunk bed and some supplies left there by traveling hunters, knowing the power of generosity. But the walls were covered with numerous graffiti and substance none encouraged the creep I hope never to identify. The place smelled like death, booze, blood, humidity, and roasted demon meat, meat to describe a few. He missed Krishna. Everything was better with him. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna Kripa chanted on, the, on his mother Tulsi's Tulsa beat. It was soothing to his heart, and an act that was so familiar, the boy wondered why he never picked up a string and of a hundred and eight beads and chanted on them. I didn't remember. Narada, I didn't have his mercy. So, how do you feel now? Mukara, his birth mother asked gently. I'm better, Krishna Kripa answered. That's the Mahamantra, right? He may remember who he was in the past. But he only knew what was necessary, nothing more. Yes, do you remember what it is? Mukara asked gently. Do you remember your sadhana? No, no, I, I remember some, but not everything, he answered his mother, still fingering the beads with practice these. I just know I was Ananda Rupini, who used to be Aegis and Hamuko before that. I remember some of my time with C's, Yuki-kun, the fall, joining Iskon. I knew you, or Guru, and practiced Krishna Consciousness, and I died in yet another car crash, begging you to be my mom, but beyond that, he gave a helpless shrug. Mukara, who was sitting beside him, gave Krishna Kripa knees Knee, Krishna Kripa's knee, a reassuring squeeze. It's all right. You will remember everything in time, trust me. She gave a warm smile, a smile only a mother could give. To answer your question, the Mahamantra, when chanted purely, like the, heart, like the heartfelt cry of a child to his mother, will attract Sri Sri Radha Krishna's causeless mercy. His mother explained, This mantra... It gives everything. It takes away the fear and anxiety that plagues our life and it gives us the highest realization of one's true self. It's addictive. Already, Kripa wanted to chant more. Four rounds simply weren't enough. Yes, his mother looked away. Clearly deep in thought. After some time, she spoke again, a serene smile on her face. And you... You want nothing else but Krishna's service, to love him without self-interest. This is pure chanting. Krishna Kripa clutched his mother's tulasi beads. He felt calm, more stable. Just as if Krishna was here. No, no, Krishna is everywhere, and especially in his name. Some blurred vis memories resurfaced, 
memories of his old guru and the many classes he gave on the power of Harinam. He took a deep breath in, remembering Krishna's aroma, and let it out. He was ready to face whatever Yehovah would throw at him, even Shesha. He tried to get up, but Radha, in her black and red cat form, prevented him, pushing him down to the bed. Yeah, listen to here, baby. You ain't looking up the snuff yet, and those demons can smell it. Yeah. She managed to slur out, her mouth not quite suited for human speech. I know you want to get the UK sap, but haste make waste, Kiki. She chided. Chided. I. I don't know how to say that! Krishna Kripa sighed. He knew they were right, but every moment he waited was a moment Yuki lost. He looked at his mother. She had removed her left arm. Some welt had formed under her fixed limb, welt that were already healing. Say, Mom, what happened to your arms? Krishna Kripa asked as a way to move away from Krishna, at least for now. His mother turned her head, a particular look taking shelter of her lips. It's, well, not quite a long story, but you know Gensokyo, right? You know, from the Toho game? Yeah, not much, but some. So far, he had played Phantasmagoria or Flower View. You came in! And he was still struggling with the 11th game, not that he had any more time to play after he began his cadet training. Okay, I'm just gonna pause a bit. I'm, I feel like I've recorded this, it's so freaky. No, okay, I was right. It is the right chapter. I probably tried to read it once, then remember that this was not the right one and I had to restart again. Okay, now that's cleared out. And then it hit him. It's real. He breathed out. Remo, Marisa, Satori, Ka Kazami. Oh, Krishna. He put his head to his head, his hand to his head. I. Kazami. Yes. Listen, when we have more time, I may go into the miracle of your birth, but. Yes, you are also Yuka's son. His mother spoke with a deep affection as she held his hand. And yes, this also means that you have two mothers. Then as she let out a laugh. <laughs> First a robot, and now a freaking plant with two mom. <laughs> what else? Shikiyaki is my betrothed wife? As far as he knew. Mukara stifled a laugh. Oh god, no. She's a widowed, and way too old for you, my son. Creep openly chuckled. This was huge, but, well, after the event of the day, this news, this news was, those news were easier to swallow. It helped that it had nothing groundbreaking about them, in his opinion. What was left to be surprised after the day he had? Not much, really. So, Reimu is now called Revati Devidasi. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Yeah, okay, too high. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So apparently I lied. Um, so there's a bit of singing, I'm sorry about that. But once again, if they're there, it's mean in their team the Maha Mantra can fit and I totally want to make you guys some karaoke. It's so fun to sing them. So, Remu's song you can chant the Maha Mantra on is 
Maiden Capriciado, um, also the Dichromatic Red and White Dichromatic Butterfly, and um, Magical Love Consultation. Marisa, we have Love Colored Master Spark. Um, I don't remember that often because I haven't heard it for a while now. And also Magus Knight. Yuka is obviously Sleeping Terror, both used and unused theme, and her son is the unused theme of her theme. Yeah. Um, and Ekarashi or Eli, yes, Eli, the guard of, you know, the I can throw my side at people, the I a bad apple is not really my theme, but whatever. Uh, her theme, which is Perdition, Perdition Crisis, also has the holy name in it, and so is Bad Apple, boat version. Okay, now this is over. His mother, ex so Remo is now Rivati Devidasi, and Marisa is Maricha Devidasi. His mother explained as she glowed with pride. They got their initiation four years after mine. Even Yuka joined, offering her flower mastery at a time at the service of the Lord. She closed her eyes and folded her palms. Sorrows and pain, sorrows painted her movement. She... She left her body a few years after, after you were taken from me. But Ekadashi, Ellie told me they were signed that she returned back, back home, back to Godhead. So, she died. Another person Kripa would never get to meet. Mukara shook her head. No, no. For a Vaishnav, that is nothing but a springboard back home. Back to Radha Krishna's lotus feet and eternal life. Or Goranga, piped Radha. Or Goranga. A small smile lit Mukara's lips. Yusika had a very long life. A life that ended perfectly as confirmed by a friend of ours. Mukara finished with folded palms. Mom, did you... Did you love her? He had to know. Last he knew, those types of relationship were not really accepted. Not out of fear or hatred, but simple logic and the fact that, as a Hare Krishna, they had better things to do than run after the pleasure of flesh and the dull material senses. Well, actually, I spoke to a um, devotee who's been practicing for 25 years, and, well, time are, are shifting. But the thing is, as a Hare Krishna, we're not against, you know, the LGBT... I'm trying to remember all the, no the letters now, but we're not against the LGBT plus movement. Um, we're just against sex in general. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically for us okay you guys went to a no not November for us for some of our people of our congregation is no not for life and you know what you're perfectly, perfectly fine with it um, so yeah but of course if you have someone in your life no matter who they are and they are willing to chant the moho the holy name well God only see the good in people. Try to go to him. Try to improve and if you cannot go on par, that's okay. We are eternal. We have unlimited lives. We have unlimited retries. And Krishna's the one who say whether it's a retry or a success. And Krishna is so merciful, you'd be surprised at what he's willing to close his eyes on to bring people back home. As long as you try. As long as you try with sincerity. So, yeah, just be sincere. Try to follow as well as possible. And, obviously... Um, if there's fault in you, people will find it. I mean, this is a mature world. Fault finding is a thing. I have it. I know people who has it, 
We all have it. We're trying not to, but it's a, it's a bad habit. But hey, you can start working on that now by not finding fault in what I do. No, actually, I wouldn't mind a bit of criticism. You know, good or, you know, at least constructive criticism. I mean, come on, I know it's bad. I know it's terrible. Mokara looked at her son, listening to something deep in his heart. We didn't lust after one another, but it was, but if it, if it was you were asking. But I did love her as a Vaishnavi or a Pseudo Vaishnava in my case, love another. Nothing less than that. But I will admit that after you were born, another unwritten rude rule had been said, had been set in place. Which is? Kripa asked, curious to catch up after so many years. If a child can be born naturally from the couple, then they can marry, she curtly described. So far, this room came into play twice. Hmm, I see. Krishna Kripa nodded, making a mental note. So, did she... How did she pass on? Time? Yutika was... She was quite old and... In that particular winter, her fireplace got extinguished in the middle of the night. She didn't... Ekadashi... Ellie told me she realized Yutika had left when her body began to wither. Mokara closed her eyes as tears flowed from them. I... She used to be known as a masochist. One who only desired to defeat powerful foe and cause pain to others. <laughs> and she would kill anyone foolish enough to even break a leaf of a... Of, oh my god. Off of her gardenia. His mother's voice choked. When she joined, she gave her entire garden of the sun to the Hare Krishna movement, saying that every single flowers had to be used for the Lord's service, same as the vegetables. She told me, she told me this was the reason she was so protective of those flowers in the first place. Tears were now flowing freely from behind her glasses. I'm... <laughs> I'm the reason why she... Why they followed the path of Bhakti. She lowered her head in reverence. <sighs> Our spiritual master sent me to do some outreach there since uh, I was a native and also hard to kill. She showed her dull limbs, moving away way from the painful subject. Didn't stop them from eating me. Mokara gave a wry smile as she wiped away her tears. But why? How? Nana, she asked. And after the battle performance Mokara had shown, her being ambushed seems more than unlikely. Why? She shrugged. My body's delicious to them. And, well... There were some powerful demons who didn't like what I was saying, so they arranged for me to be sent to old hell and... She sighed. Well, long story short, all my limbs got infected with a highly virulent gangrene. Amputation was the only way to save my life. Krishna Kripa's eyes widened. He knew gangrene. He had seen many hunters suffer from it. Yeah, well, that was all part of this big multi-level sham to gather human meat for them dumb tourists. Radha Shemasundra piped up, reminding her nephew that, even as a cat, she could still speak. First, Yamami would infect them with something bad enough to remove a limb, then Parsi, Pondramaya would curse him back would curse him because back then she hated everyone equally and she got a kick out of seeing others suffer. Then Yami, Yugi would pick him up and show him some of old hell's finest hospitality and fatten it up until they got sick enough to lop the limb off. The Kasha began to ruefully knead Krishna Kripa's belly, careful not to hurt him with his with her HER claws. That was how we got the best meat for Guyud, Gyudon, Sukiyaki, Yakitori, 
She shuddered. When your mom was sent here by this one fake Buddhist, probably an OC by now, since at the time of the writing, I thought only Byakuren and um, Murasa were Hare Krishnas, but no, as it turned out, Ichirin Kumoi and Unzan. No, actually, I just had I just had a brain for it now. Okay, sorry about that. Well, let's just say it ain't this animal and yokai will grow stronger after eating hermit meat. I don't even know what I was trying to get that with that phrase. Krishna glanced back at his mom, who some, who someone lifted her skirt, showing a pair of mannequin legs. I can't count myself lucky that they wanted to make some ham later. Otherwise, forget about sitting down. She gave a humorous smile. Chuckling as if being chopped into pieces was no big deal. You know, you know better. I think this was the moment I realized I was not this body. She began inspecting her doll hand. I was in so much suffering. I had a fever, low on blood. It felt as if I was about to die. Then I realized that I was not on that it was only my body and my mind that were affected. I, the soul, had nothing to do with it, she grinned. I'm not this body. I'm the eternal spirit soul. Whatever happened to this body, whether it gets eaten, burned, or rot somewhere, it doesn't matter. I'm the soul, the servant of God, Krishna. And if my master desire me to die in agony, I will joyfully go to this so-called ordeal knowing that he is pleased with my service. And this knowledge and service will give me the highest bliss. Krishna Kripa stared at his mother, his mouth wide open. You see, Kripa, for a Vaishnava, whether he lives or die, whether he stays in the mature world or return home, it's all the same. In birth and death, we serve the Lord, no matter what. Jeez, Mokara, I know you in, you're into sweet surrender, but even this is a bit intense, Radha mumbled. The hermit began to laugh. Oh, if you think this is too much, you need to reread the Sharanagati songbook of Bhaktivinotakor. Radha rolled her eyes. Yeah, I did. I'm just not there yet. So, how the hell did you survive that? Kripa asked before wincing. He knew he shouldn't cuss like that in front of his mother. Oh, uh, this is where the sto Oh, this is where the story get good, Radha purred. Get a load of this, kitty. Ya see, Parsi, me, Utsuho, and Yugi each got a limb since, you know, premium god and we're like the pet of the boss of old hell. Wait, you're a pet of... Yep, used to be a simple corpse slugger and Utara was one of the furnace operator. Radashema Surai sighed in nostalgia. Then Hell had to relocate and then Miss Savitri, Satori, she adopted us. Save us when we were starving, she purred. Anyway, since this was hermit meat, me, Yami, Utara and Pundramaya got to take everything since... Well, the demon of hell don't need no more power boost, and no, I ain't talking about your hell, but Gensokian hodgepodge Japanese fantasy land hell. Obviously, Radha Shemasudar, um, think Toho Project Old Hell is different from Shin Megami Tensei Naraku. Um, but to be honest, both Gensokyo and the Shin Megami Tensei story are pretty much the same amount of uh, myth and urban legend, except that in Shin Megami Tensei they have God. <laughs> um, in Toho Project, the furthest thing, the closest thing they have to Krishna is a servant of Kuvera, or as you all know, um, okay. Okay, what's her name? Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Torama Rusho 
Yup. <laughs> so we have all the cats and all the Buddhist, well, the one we know of. Um, once again, I cannot wait until Krishna give me the story about how Mukara took over against Sokyo and gave Hare Krishna to people, because there must have been some crazy shenanigan happening that I'm not aware of. Krishna Creep opened his mouth and then closed it with a click. You ate my mom? For some obscure reason, he could not explain, Kripa was this close to throw the Hellcat off his lap and onto a wall violently. But Rada beat him to it, taking back her human form after she jumped off. Nya, hey, calm down, she survived, alright? Rada yelped. Maybe I should continue, Mokara ventured. But uh, this happened well over 15 years ago. Those types of injuries are to be expected when preaching in a place where no man-eaters reside. His mother dismissed. Beside, by sacrificing four limbs, I got four amazing god sisters. She smiled at Radha. Wait, that's how you and Rin became Hare Krishnas? No, wait, that's how Rin became a Hare Krishna? Now that he thought about it, Radha was definitely the stupid cat in Toho 11. No, not that she was stupid. Not that she was stupid, obviously. Not just Rin. All who ate my flesh, sanctified after four years of eating offered food, became purified, she grinned. Prashadam is our best weapon against the clutches of Maya. But it wasn't just your flesh, Muki. Pundramaya always had this fascination with tattoos, and she would collect them like stamp. Okay, yeah, I know, in, ja in Japan, there's a stigma against tattoos. But by this point, Mokara or Toyosa Tomimi no Miko um, stopped identifying with Japan. She identified herself as a Hare Krishna, and she met this one friend who had her all of the 12 Tilak Mark tattooed at the feet of Goranga Mahaprabhu uh, tattooed in, the, in her back. And she also saw those Kirtanias with the holy name tattooed on their wrist. So she thought, hey, that's a wonderful preaching method. I just need to shake people's hands. So she got the Mahamantra, the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, tattooed on her wrist in three different languages. Actually, she wanted to do all the language she knew. And Mukara is also a polyglot. But, well, that happened. Oh, Krishna, what the hell is this family? Your mom used to have the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, as I just said, inked to her wrist. She had it in Sanskrit, English, and in Hiragana. Radha gave a grin. Long story short, we began chanting the name, and next thing we knew, we realized we got an actual saint in our midst. Oh, hush. Mukara lowered her head bashfully. I still have a long way to go to be an actual saint. Yeah, you gave salvation to f the four worst demon in hell. I call that saintly. Mukara cleared her throat. Yes. And it is only due to my spiritual master's causeless mercy, nothing more. She demurely admitted. Radha Shemasundar winked at, winked at Krishna Kripa, as if to say, See, your mom's a real honest to, cr honest to Krishna saint. The teen could only stare at her. You see, KK. No, oh, sorry, that's Mukara. You see, KK. Or uh, that's another nickname. Also, yes, if you see Krishna's all of Krishna's first letter of his name, you have triple K. Ka Kazami Krishna Kripa. No, I don't know why I was thinking when I gave him that, but I think Krishna's rolling on the ro ground right now, thinking this hilarious. Because, yeah, Kripa may be white, but he's not an American. You see, KK, even if I don't identify myself as a hermit anymore, my body still has the benefit of one, she explained. Long life, eternal youth, and damn near Im oh, Sorry, that was Radha. Ah! Long life, eternal youth, and damn near impossible to kill, Radha joyfully revealed as she sat beside her adopted nephew, keeping him close. 
good thing too. Otherwise, the universe would have lost. Rara, that's enough now. His mom stopped the Hellcat. I know you think of me as the second coming of the Christ, but I assure you I am just another Jiva trying to please her eternal master. Yeah, me too, the cat smiled. Anyway, she changed the face of old Hell for the better, got four god sisters, and made friend with one Alice Margatroyd. Mokara smiled, repositioning, repositioning her prosthetic now that the wealth had healed over. All right, we wasted enough time here. She turned to her son. KK. I know. I know I couldn't give you a normal childhood. And she sighed. Listen, if it is too much for you, you don't have to think of me as your mother. You don't even have to stay with me once we're out of the Heartless Hermitage. Just... Just keep chanting the holy name. That's... That's all I want. Krishna Kripa moved his gaze to his hand. No, no, I, I wanted you to be my mom, so... It's just... He buried... He sighed as he buried his head in his hand. It's... It's like way too much. Meeting Krishna, Yuki's alive and possessed by, I don't know, Erebus, I guess. Flynn's kidnapped, and I learned that everything I went through is just a sick play of... Uh, of course. Of course, Narada would know. Kripa sighed as he got up. And I am born... I am born of, Kanz of Kazami Yuka, and... I have no idea who you are game-wise, but I guess you must be super powerful too. He ran a hand at his greening hair. Anyway, let's just go get Yuki and Flynn out of trouble. I can deal with all that shit once we're out. And with that, the servant of God grabbed his shovel and headed out. At this point, he knew he didn't have any choice. He couldn't turn back the clock. He could only go forward and pray for the best. Are you sure you cannot let us in? Mukara asked the guard blocking their, their path to Cafe Florida. I have some urgent information to give Fujiwara. Ma'am, demons ain't allowed here without another member. Now get! The guard waved his gun, his threat clear. Mukara raised her hand. All right, we're leaving. The saintly hermit bowed and turned to her heels. Ah oh, man, what a bummer, Rada sighed. I'm sorry, you guys. I guess the guy's allergic to hellcats. Her shoulders slumped as the divine trio walked away from Cafe Florida. Don't be. In such a place, I have to applaud the guard for his cool headed and for his cool head and bravery. A lesser man would not be as calm, Mukara praised as she glowed with joy. Really, if I can manage to crack this hermitage, I am engaging him as a temple guard. Yo, God, sis, don't put the bull in front of the yoke. Rada... <sighs> Rada protested. Mom, why do we have to speak to Fujiwara again? Nana... Krishna Kripa asked his newly returned mother. Mukara turned her gaze toward her son, meeting his own gaze. Beta, what I told you about the hermitage and how this reality is but what what did I what did I told you about the hermitage and how this reality is but an illusion? Krishna Kripa nodded. Well this this needs to be revealed to the population at large, in a tactful, gentle way that won't cause two quarter of the population to go mad from revelation. I also want to check whether Fujiwara or this skinned man are the hermits, she admitted. But in truth, I want to get you and your sister out of trouble. You still deserve the punishment for letting your sister release a potentially dangerous entity. His mother spoke amiably, a smile lighting her lips. By the way, thank you for releasing him. There is nothing worse than being sealed. Nanashi just watched his aunt and mother, simply following them under, in underground Tokyo. He realized that, even with his birth mother around, he was still in way over his head. 
Same, okay. Okay, so this is supposed to be a flashback. <clears throat> Say, Mukara, when you come back from your preaching mission, I want to show you around Tokyo. Aegis, Ananda Rupini proposed the young, the young girl. As long as you keep me away from the loud street, then it is a deal. Well, I kept my end at a deal. Krishna Kripa thought as he rubbed his eyes. Oh, shit, I need to change my contacts. And then he remembered. They had to run out of whatever... And whatever was left was both the wrong color or ungodly expensive. Even with the Asura Kai gone. Beta, his mother spoke. You don't need to hide anymore. Just remove them. Her golden eyes shining behind her glasses. Krishna Kripa turned his bloodshot eyes to his birth mother. One of them at least. How did you... I can hear desires, remember? Right. Some relief bloomed in his heart. He had worn either glasses or colored contact for as long as he could remember. To be able to remove them and to stop coloring his hair. I'm free, he thought as he expertly removed his old black contact, revealing his brass-colored eyes. He looked to his mother and aunt. Both women could barely hold back their tears. Ah, uh, mom? Radha? Is everything all... Kripa's words died in his mouth as Mokara engulfed him in her doll arm. Then he realized. He was back. He was back. Back to his loving, grieving mother who had just now realized her son was back. He now understood why Krishna's voice had choked when he remembered his own. Oh, my son. Oh, my putra. Hey, putre. Hey, putre. His mother cried as she held him. Okay, putra means son in Sanskrit. There's more than one word. There's nandana. Like nanda nandana or the one who gives bliss. A son gives bliss. For a girl, that's nandini. So, if you want to call a girl a daughter, you can also you can either go... Musume or Nandini. Both of them are sweet. And for a boy, it's Putra because the sun can get you out of, hell, of the hell named Pu. Yeah, there's a hell named Pu. P U. I'm sure it smells exactly like it sounded. <laughs> this show of spontaneous love, free from desires, and unbothered by time, places, and circumstances, took Krishna Kripa by surprise this sort of love. He had never experienced something like this with the boss, not even his sister. And then, this impromptu loving moment was interrupted not by Shisha, but by a Hunter Association notification, an urgent one, if his phone kept buzzing like that. Krishna Kripa sighed, well, back to reality, or something that was that was what he thought had been real, now crumbling to dust. He grabbed the smartphone and froze. There, on the notification tab, there was an emergency request an emergency quest to be taken taken immediately. The fairy forest is burning! I need help Yes the meme are real. I like to put memes in my story. You better fear me now. Krishna Kripa didn't need to read to know who it was. Oh, oh, Krishna! He automatically call he automatically called out to his master. Trouble? His mother asked. Mom, there is a magical forest in Yoyogi Park. I know it's Queen, and and one of the fairies, Napaya, sent this. He showed her the tab. The forest was burning. The place where Krishna looked the, the most at home. The place where Krishna had played among the, among the glowing pink sakura tree. The place where the Lord had fed him. That had fed him chas. Oh my god, that was a terrible cut. Where Krishna had massaged Krishna's lotus feet. It was burning. Beta, let's go. Lead the way. Mukara spoke with urgency. 
already knowing what her son desired to do. Oops. He grabbed his mother by the hand and dragged her as fast as he could to the nearest terminal. Behind her, Rada ran. Hey, wait up, kids! Where's the fire? <laughs> okay, so it's already 7.30 where I am. I'm pretty tired. Okay, sorry. Uh, okay, actually, that's... I can save that for another time. Oh, I feel so tired. Okay. Maybe I'll edit this so that it seems like I did complete one anyway. See you soon.